Good morning, sisters. My name is Melanie, and I'm coming to you with my Afghan and my readers and my forsythia bush from my mama um, right here in my backyard in Dayton. And this morning, it's my privilege to be able to bring to you what I've been kind of studying in the Word. And I have found in the last couple of years the Psalms to be a book of great comfort to me. The Psalms are a book of like um, people's prayers and their outpouring and their praise and their thanksgiving and their wrestling with hard times and they're reminding, the psalmist reminding of God and truth in his word. And right now, I don't know about you, but I need hefty doses of that every single day. And this week I've been reading in Psalm 33 and I want to share that psalm with you this morning. And it says this, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. And here is the reason why we are to praise him even when times are bad. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all of his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of, his stead, of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his, of his mouth, all their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. This word fear is like, complete respect and revere and honor. I like to think of it like awestruck wonder. Let all the earth stand before the Lord in awestruck wonder. Let us all fear him. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And here is why. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of nations Think. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and he sees. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. I love this fact. The God that spoke and created the universe is the same God that's intimately involved in, his, in the creation of man because he fashioned our very hearts. It goes on. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might, it cannot rescue. No government, no king, no president, no health care system, nothing can rescue like our God can. And this is why, behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him and those who stand in that awestruck wonder of a mighty, powerful God. On those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. This part always gets me. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. I love this word, steadfast love. It's in this passage, Psalm 33, three times. Um, but what's really cool about it is it's a Hebrew word, chesed. And chesed is a beautiful word. It talks about, the. Co it's referring to the covenant love of God, the faithful love of God, the promise-keeping love of God that will not end no matter what. 
I've grown this past year in searching for this word and I can tell you that it is all over the Old Testament and one of my very the very first places that God mentions it is when he talks about himself and you can read about it in Exodus 34 but he says that he is a God abounding in steadfast love he's overflowing with it he is the God who also keeps steadfast love and he holds on to it when we can't when we struggle to stay faithful to him he does not quit in being faithful to us a place in the New Testament where I love hearing about God's faithful love to us is in Romans 8. Romans 8, another beautiful passage that I'd recommend you diving into this time when there's so much uncertainty. But the very last verse says this, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, anything else in all of creation, nothing, absolutely nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sisters, times are hard. I'm with you. I am struggling with a lot of deep hard things right now but our God's love for us will not quit no matter even if times are hard he is with us he has promised to be faithful to us in the good and the bad hold tight to that that is our deep hope um, today sweet friends go to his word seek him out he will be faithful to you he will be your help and your shield and your protector. Stay fast and strong to him, committed to him. And I pray, ladies, for each one of you, all of us here at Dayton Women in the Word, care for you deeply, and we empathize that these times are hard. If you need prayer or a friend to listen, please reach out to us. We'd love to, to encourage you. Um, and pray for you. I hope today that you will have a beautiful day. Keep looking to him and keep strong in his word.